I recently got to work on a really fun project for a Christmas present for a client. The customer purchased this steamer trunk and brought it to me and commissioned me to create a bar out of it. The trunk was from the early 1900s and it was a little bit stinky. <laughs> it was the property of Clarence Livingston. There's his initials. And it had some really cool features like this drawer for a hat. The client and I discussed all the little details back and forth in text messaging. We discussed our ideas and design details. Had a few phone conversations and I even referenced my ugly duckling piece that I did in the past. So the work began and I had to be very careful. So I carefully cleaned the piece and you'll notice in this section that it's somewhat damaged. This area is rather compromised because it's wood with a paper covering and it got a little bit ruffled. It may have had some water damage. I do like to imagine about this trunk and the waters that it traveled over. I am using Dixie Belle's clear flat coat because I want to seal it before I do anything else to it. So here is the area where that loose oil cloth, I pulled it up and put the first layer of decoupage paper. I used Distress Damask. So now I am using some solid surface material that I had cut shelves to fit and I am drilling, measuring and drilling some holes for the brass corner post that will hold the rails. So I start the hole with the masking tape and a smaller drill bit and then I progress to a larger drill bit. This solid surface material drills just like wood, but you do want to wear a mask because those little particles will fly all over the place and you do not want those in your lungs. So I'm cutting open those little corner posts that hold the bar rails. I love these details. I just think they're so classy. They easily screw into the holes that were drilled. And I did secure them with glue. They also were a little bit long, so I ended up cutting off a little from the bottom. And now what I'm doing is inserting the rail in and putting a piece of tape to where the depth is so I know how much to leave on the ends. So I'm measuring in between and that way I can cut it accurately. So after some research, I learned that I could easily cut this material, these little brass rails. So I am using my um, miter box and my saw. And yes, my saw has seen some better days. Maybe some new tools are in order in the new year. Oh, and by the way, I do have an Amazon wish list in my description box. So I ended up using channel locks. And now I'm using uh, my drill and kind of an upside down picture and I am installing the stem wear holders. I'm going to provide links to everything that I used in this project in the description box. It's looking pretty good. <laughs> so I take care with every little section as I move along to make sure that it's clean and sealed. I'm sealing the brass as well as sealing that oil cloth. So um, these areas that were in good shape, I wanted to just make sure that they got sealed. I am using Dixie Belle's flat sealer and it goes on kind of bluish and a little bit streaky, but it dries very clear. I wanted to make sure that there wasn't too much of the damask pattern on there so that it wouldn't be overwhelming. And I wanted to preserve everything that I could from the original. 
The client and I had agreed that we liked the outside patina and wanted to keep as much of that as possible. Obviously the inside needed refreshed. And now for the wine rack, I took some upholstery tacks and simply cut the uh, pin part or the nail part off and I'm using E6000 glue and this wine rack um, that's an accordion style is extended fully which is great it fits in there like that so I don't need to worry about um, me putting these on and having them move and pop off but I'm just using the E6000 glue and then I'm taking those little caps that remained after I cut the nail portion off and just covering the original screws. Little details like this, I think, make all the difference. So these are brass and just a cool little extra design detail. I let that dry and here's what it looks like. And then the uh, drawer. So the, the handles I cleaned and sealed, but they still looked pretty rusty. So I just took gilding wax and copper. There is no brass gilding wax, so I used copper and later on uh, highlighted it with a little bit of gemstone mousse and golden gem. And that kind of warmed up that coppery look a little bit and made it look a little bit more like brass. But I just love the way this brings out all the little details that you missed before in this beautiful hardware. It didn't come off, otherwise I would have been able to really aggressively clean and polish the brass, but it was very much part with no um, back uh, piece to pull it off, so I just wanted to leave it alone so I didn't uh, get into a worse mess and ruin it. <laughs> so I used the gilding wax on the metal corner pieces of the drawers as well. And I actually had to repair a little piece down at the bottom that was loose. I simply used E6000 on that as well and taped it until it dried. The drawer had a little damage on it too, so I treated it in the same way as I did the back piece by sealing it, then using Dixie Mud in white. Then I'm using Palmetto Paint. I realize this green doesn't match, but you'll see where I'm going with this eventually. I put this coat on, and then when that is finished, I'm going to work with a transfer. This transfer is rather special. It's the Baroque Swirl Transfer from the Bells and Whistle line. It was inspired by Brandy Collinborn, owner and creator of Brushed by Brandy. Unfortunately, the transfer is no longer available. That's kind of what makes it so special. Someone asked me why I would use this transfer since it was no longer available, that they would want to keep it. I said I would rather have someone special to get it on this very special project and I thought it was very deserving of this special transfer. Brandy has some new endeavors and she's no longer a brand ambassador with Dixie Bell. You will want to check out her channel. She is an amazing furniture artist and I will definitely put the link to her channel in my description box. After I put the transfer on, then I came back in with Vintage Duck Egg. And this color is a little bit closer to the damask pattern 
And I'm just being very random with this, kind of like I was with the palmetto paint. And just uh, filling in a little bit of the details with my detail brush. that dried here's the part that I think really makes this pop it's just black wax and I think that this really marries that design to the piece you'll see why as I apply the wax and wipe it back that it just kind of blends in with the piece and it just looks like it belongs there I added another piece of the transfer down in the lower right corner and did not do any extra painting on it. And then I continue with that large area in the back that needed the repair and do the same treatment with the transfer. This part is pretty cool. This transfer is large and this big chandelier section just filled the bill to cover up that area that needed disguising and also give a lot of drama to the back of the piece um, where, like I said, our my client and I agreed that we wanted to keep the patina. This transfer helped us to repair that area, disguise it, and I think it just enhances that original patina on the outside. I did speed this section up, but I will tell you it took a long, long time to apply this giant transfer. <laughs> and this is just one half of it. It will wrap around the other side as well. Some drawers were removed in order to make the shelves happen and the idea here was to use the idea from the Ugly Duckling project and take the drawers and make a bar cart out of them so it actually had an additional piece. I added wheels that were brass and then a corner piece that I painted um, with a copper paint and then later added the gold. So let's take a look back at what we started with this kind of cool stinky old trunk 
and let's look at the transformation into a brand new bar. Sure hope you enjoyed all the details and I wonder if Clarence would approve. If you're interested in any Dixie Bell products, my affiliate link is in the description box. I hope you have a very happy new year. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. Visit us at LaVintageDecor.company and on Instagram we're LaVintageDecor and on Facebook we're LaVintageDecor Altoona. Stay well!